Hey doing year 10s, welcome to your first chemistry video. This video is topic 1.1, why do we organize the elements? And before we get straight into it, you need a couple of things. The first thing you need is your booklet in front of you. The second thing you need is a pen and a highlighter to copy down the notes. And the way that I want you to watch these videos is to first read through the video's notes. So you'll see that the notes go through like PowerPoint slides, please just read them through. Then, I want you to watch slide by slide. So watch the slide. Don't write anything down. Watch it through. Listen to what I'm saying. Watch the highlights and then pause it just before the page turns over. Then copy down the notes. You need to rinse and repeat that procedure all the way through the video. Let's get straight into it. This is topic 1.1. Why do we organize the elements? Let's go. So topic 1.1, why do we organize the elements? We basically have an introductory look at the periodic table. So the learning outcomes are the things that you must be able to do after watching the video. You need to outline the development of the periodic table. You need to know what role Antoine Lavoisier and Dobenheimer played in the formation of the periodic table. You need to know a little bit about Mendeleev and compare and contrast his periodic table to the current periodic table. And if you need some more information, make sure you check out the text on page 224. So the current day periodic table is a combination of 200 years worth of scientific research. Many scientists have contributed to today's periodic table. One of the first was a guy called Antoine Lavoisier, and he was the first chemist to start grouping elements with similar properties. And that's the foundation of our current periodic table, which I have on the left. So here is our current periodic table, and it contains groups, which are the vertical columns of the periodic table. They're numbered 1 through to 18. And the current periodic table has similar elements arranged in similar chemical and physical properties. So as we go down a group, we've got elements that have similar chemical and physical properties. So things in group one all have similar properties. Things in group two all have similar properties. The periods are the horizontal rows of the periodic table and they're numbered one through to seven. Now the periods indicate the number of electron shells, which we get into a bit later in the course. But for today, we'll just stick to groups and periods. So it's now 1829 and a guy called Dopenheimer continued the work of Lavoisier by looking at 40 elements that he had available at the time. And he started to group these elements into threes based on their similar physical properties. A physical property is like a melting point, a boiling point, or a density. He called these groupings triads, and these triads were instrumental in identifying patterns which helped us determine underlying atomic structures, or give us information about the structures of the atoms. So he identified lithium, sodium, and potassium as having similar physical properties. So he grouped those as a triad, and you can see those labeled here on our current periodic table. They're in the same group, group one, because they have similar physical properties. He didn't know that they had similar chemical properties at the time, but later research found that they actually do. Then we have something like chlorine, bromine, and iodine. That is in group 17. These are non-metals, but again, they had similar physical properties, so he grouped them together as a triad. Triads having similar physical properties. He did a couple of other groupings as well that he in fact got right. These triads helped lead us to the development of our current periodic table. So just to review, Dopenheimer, he identified a number of different triads which helped us start to develop an understanding of the periodic table. Those triads are found in the groups of the current periodic table and the groups are the vertical columns. The, the periods are the horizontal rows. So Dmitri Mendeleev built on the knowledge from Lavoisier and Dopenheimer and he then begin, begin to start to put this jigsaw together. He 
wrote the names and the symbols of all of the elements he had at a time on a bit of card, and then he tried to order them up in terms of atomic weight. He was a lot later than the last two, so he had some more information. Now, the atomic weight is essentially how heavy the elements are. The number of protons and the number of neutrons tells us the weight. And he tried to organize them in terms of weight. And he proposed this law, which is known as the periodic law. Elements have properties that reoccur or repeat according to their atomic weight. So he noticed a pattern in atomic weights that something would repeat, the chemical and physical properties would repeat. But he was also very important because he left holes in the periodic table. When he was doing this work, not all of the elements had been discovered. So he left holes where he knew that an element would be placed, but was not yet discovered. He arranged his periodic table a bit more like a list, and his groups are actually going across this way. His periods were kind of going down. But you can see where he put a question mark, that was an element that he thought would be discovered, but was not yet discovered. So for example, he knew that there was an element that would be similar to silicon. It had not yet been discovered, but he called it echosilicon. And he knew that there must be an element there because he knew that the pattern would repeat. There would be something with similar properties to silicon that had not yet been found. So he made some predictions about that element. He predicted its weight, its density, and its color. And then a few years later, he was actually proven correct. They discovered this element called germanium, which is actually right underneath silicon in the current periodic table because it has similar chemical and physical properties. So he actually predicted that element to be correct. And in fact, a number of his predictions were found to be correct. Not all of them, because they, he didn't have sophisticated measuring equipment to work out the mass, but his idea was in fact correct. He was able to predict elements based on their atomic weight and their repeating patterns. And that was the format, that was the, the foundation of our current periodic table. Now we might be asked to compare and contrast his periodic table with the current day periodic table. Now the words compare and contrast means give an account of the similarities and the differences between those two things. So what are some of the similarities between Mendeleev's periodic table and the current periodic table? Well, the first similarities is that they abbreviate the elements with the symbol. So both of them contain abbreviated elements as a symbol. The second similarity is that they list all the elements that are available. Mendeleev listed all of the possible elements that he had and the current periodic table lists them all that we now know exist. One of the other similarities is they're organized with a repeating pattern. Mendeleev's pattern was atomic weight, whereas the current periodic table works on atomic mass, which is slightly different, but he, he was definitely on the right, he definitely had the right idea. So what are some of the differences? Well, Mendeleev, his was more of a list. There was kind of a list going on with his where he just listed the elements. The current periodic table, well, it's more of a grid structure. We have our groups and we have our periods. What are some of the other differences? Well, Mendeleev left blank spaces for the elements that have not yet been discovered. Well, our periodic, the current periodic table, there's no gaps in it. His was arranged on mass, whereas now the current periodic table is arranged on the atomic number, the number of protons, and also it's got to do with the electrons as well. The electrons we'll touch on in an upcoming video. So, some top tips for this video. Remember that the rows are the groups and the periods are the horizontal rows. Remember that Mendeleev left gaps in his periodic table and the triads are three elements with similar chemical and physical property. Thanks for watching Year 10s. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you.